Hello, my name is Carol May Wittick and welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. Who is the awakening woman? She is a woman who is seeking a greater possibility in her reality and looking for solutions. She knows being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If she can transform herself, she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who speak to your spirituality, your sensuality and your soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's Her Conversations is relationship coach Emily Turner. After divorcing at a young age, Emily found her experiences had equipped her with insights that she could help others in a way that she had needed for herself. She now serves women who wish to create functioning relationships in partners and with themselves. During our conversation, we discussed the effects of not addressing recurring themes or noticing our lessons, what damage can occur if we bring past baggage into a new relationship, and why we need to forget the programming of fairy tales and drop our princess mentality. But as always, I begin by asking my guests, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel at your most HER? I probably feel at my most HER in the mornings. Like as I um, as I meditate and I really come back into myself and I really reconnect with my my inner um, inner self and I really allow myself to fall away from my day's jobs and my day's activities, I really connect into that higher energy and I um, really am able to just be. And when I'm just being, I am at my most her like I um I really feel my most feminine and my most female state like because I'm not doing anything I'm, I'm literally just being there and existing in the pure state of energy perfect fantastic and I just want to find out more about how you became the coach that you are today and working with women within relationships what was it about your life that led you to that point where was your point of pivotal transformation and realizing that this was the work that you had to do so I um I myself went through my um a divorce at 24 25 so my husband and I separated at the age of I was 24 and he was 27 and I went through a very um turbulent time after that and I even though you have the support of your friends and your family, there are just things you can't say to them and there are just things you can't express. And I felt very alone. And so the next, like, I think five years of that journey, I spent packing up my entire life within me and not dealing with the issues that needed to be dealt with and the baggage that I'd carried. So I carried a lot into my next relationship. And I got to this point where I felt that I wasn't using my life to its full potential and I wasn't serving people that really made me feel, um, it lit me up, like my heart didn't feel full, I didn't feel like I was serving anyone, the job I was in was not giving me this um, this feeling of like fulfilment and I remember sitting down one day and thinking like what what is it that I want to do? Where where am I needed? Like the question came up, like, where are you needed? Where do you feel like there's a gap? And I realised there's this gap between when you end a relationship and you walk into the next one, there's a, there's a void of nothingness and people don't know how to deal with it. And the awareness to that is such a massive thing that we really need to have in order to prepare ourselves to not only reconnect with ourselves but to let go of what was so that we can walk in free from those things. And I know through my own experiences that I walked into my next relationship carrying every bit of baggage that I had and expected him to just deal with it. Like you fix it. Like how am I going to fix it? I can't fix it. So I realized that the disconnect is that we have to fix it and we have to fix our relationships with ourselves first. And if you're not fixing that, you can't, you can't fully enter into a new relationship ready to commit to that, ready to be there without carrying these things. And I wish that this sort of thing was available to me. And 
that someone had made me aware of it rather than just saying, oh, just get back on the horse, just get, you know, just, you'll be, you'll be fine. Like you'll get over it, you know, everything's fine. And so I just felt like there was this place where I needed to fill a spot where I wish someone had been for me. And that's where I came to this. Like it just, it lit lit me. Oh my God. It lights me up that, you know, my heart becomes so full when I'm able to watch someone walk a healing process and I'm walk a place of where they've finally let the baggage fall away and know that they don't have to carry it like a trophy hmm. and that they can actually reclaim their own worth, reclaim their own definition of what their life means and know that they don't have to sacrifice that completely to walk into the new relationships that they form. So that was where I sort of really ended up being and how I got to this point in my life and knew that I, this is where I needed to be. Mm. And, you, you know, you talk about um, leaving the baggage of one relationship, you know, before you walk into to the other one. Is that something that you were aware of beforehand or how did, how did you come to that realisation that that was a pattern that you needed to kind of stop in its tracks before you went on to any other further relationships in order to for them to be successful because we're you know this conversation and this kind of awareness about relationships I feel is is very recent and very new it's not something that I remember anyone of like my mother's generation or anything talking about this kind of stuff so how did this how did you become aware of of this work and why that the the relationship that you went in after your divorce perhaps was had echoes of of a previous relationship and that there was something that you need to do within yourself and it wasn't the other person because usually when we the the old the old pattern of relationships is the other person's meant to make you happy and if it's not working it's their fault so how yeah. do you so it's um it's funny because the the relationship that I walked into after my after my separation is the man that I'm married to now so Mm. I like I I say to people like I married by rebound and it's not always healthy to do that now I didn't actually notice the pattern at first so it took me I reckon as even we were getting married I was becoming very aware of the baggage I was projecting onto him and telling him that it was his fault that he wasn't meeting my standard and he wasn't doing this and he was falling short of this. And I'm really blessed with a person who is very, very kind and he just moves past and he's like, I love you anyway. And I know that we'll get through this. And I believe that, you know, we're meant to be. And he's a very wonderful and one of a kind individual who for a male I've never really experienced like a lot of the men that have been in my life are very hard and very like, you need to sort your shit out. Like you need to get over it. And he's not like that. So at first he just took the barrage of like constant from me and I didn't, wasn't aware I was projecting. And for so long it was constantly like, you're not making me happy enough. You're not doing this. He's like, I don't know where I'm falling short, but I'll control, I'll try harder for you. And, and it was one day I sort of looked at myself and I thought, this isn't your fault. Like you're not the person that's doing anything wrong here. I'm projecting this onto you and I need to sort it out because it's going to be the one thing that pulls apart our entire relationship that we've built. Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer of having a very strong foundation at the beginning of your relationship. And if you try to build on that, you will constantly fall and it will constantly come back to the ground and you'll constantly feel like you're building from nothing. And we were like, we were constantly falling over and he was going, but I'm happy. So why aren't you? And I'm like, well, you're not doing this. And And then I realised that it wasn't actually him, it was me. I was projecting to him what I hadn't dealt with and the baggage that I'd carried over and hadn't actually been aware of it because, as you say, like my mum's generation don't talk about baggage. Like you just just lock it off, you get rid of it and you don't deal with it ever again. You don't talk about it and that's it. Mm -hmm. And so to actually unpack it is a really, really emotional experience and people are like why would you do that why would you go back and do with it now like you're over it you love someone new yes I love someone new but I would love him to the full capacity that I can and not to a you need to meet this standard before I love you and the standard is this unrealistic thing we bring from the previous one because you're like well he hurt me in this way so I'm going to 
make him suffer until he learns how to love me this way. And it's not about that. Like it's about you needing to learn how to redefine who you are and complete your happiness and your your journey and everything else within you so that when you move into the next one, you're not carrying that. Like it's not their fault that that person left or that person hurt you, but you have to find where that is in your life and acknowledge it. And for me, it was after we got married that I was like, I'm still punishing you for something you never did. And I need to stop because you're not that person. Any, you're not that person in general or at all. And I need to let go. And if you're not letting go, you're going to carry it. And every relationship that you go through, if you don't, you know, if you go through multiple, you're going to find the same pattern. And if you're not aware of it, you just keep repeating. And we cycle and repeat until we learn how to deal with it. That's that's how we go through things and how we learn lessons. If you're not going to learn the lesson, you'll continue to repeat the same thing over and over and over again until you learn it. And he and I have, like, we, we're still going through things where we're repeating the same thing at the moment because we're not learning the lesson of how to work together better mm-hmm. in our in the business that we have, like we're butting heads, but we're not learning how to learn, like learn how to work together better to connect when it's tough. So we'll continue to to go through this lesson until we learn it. And I said to him, until we learn, we will continue to be taught. Until And the minute we connect, it will stop. And he was like, oh, that makes sense. And I'm like, I truly believe it's the same in relationships. And so if you want to carry every bit of that baggage to the next one, it's going to be the same result. And it's not going to be that person's fault, no matter what you blame them for. They may not be, they will not be the sole issue of why it didn't work or why you're constantly feeling unfulfilled or not filled up or not loved enough. But the thing is, it's not their job to love you completely. It's your your job to love you completely and then for them to fill up on top of that their job is not to make you completely happy that's your job you have to make you completely happy you have to know how to bring happiness into your own life and theirs is to complement and pack on top not fill and that's the lesson that we haven't learned we've learned that the external happiness has to make us happy but if our internal happiness can't make us happy we will never find happiness that person or people in your life will always feel short of what your expectation is because you can't you can't fill your own expectation mm-hmm. and how are you guiding women to do that it's a lot of reconnection with um relationship with self so the one thing i say is the longest relationship you will ever be in is the one you have with yourself mm-hmm. And we don't think about our life as a relationship with ourselves. We think about it as, oh, it's just, it's part of life. Like that's just us. But I'm like, if you don't have a relationship with yourself, you can't have a relationship with anybody else because you're not going to understand the needs if you can't meet your own needs. So it's, it's about rewiring those needs and understanding that that voice that you hear is the woman you need to look after. Your inner woman is there the same way you have an inner child, the same way you have an inner adult. There is an inner woman in you that has to be looked after. And when you embrace her power and you embrace the bits of her within you, you actually claim a part of you that can never, ever be taken away. Like she can't be taken away with you from you if you listen to her. And the hardest thing we ever do is to find her and listen to her again because we've been taught to not listen. We've been taught to suppress and ignore because everything inside us is wrong. And particularly if you've been through relationships where you've been told that you don't know or that you're silly or that you're dumb or you've got no idea, it's very hard to trust that internal guidance that says, no, he's not right here. You're allowed to feel this. So you suppress it and then you don't know how to reclaim that. And it is about defining worth. So it's about relearning how to define your worth. And I walk women through how to do that, like how to take take that journey and that journey is not always easy like if you want to do the hard stuff you have to do the hard walk and it can't be easy like it's not always going to be easy it doesn't mean it has to be painful but it's not always going to be easy Mm. it's about being really honest and it's about getting really really into yourself and opening up and unpacking 
everything in you. And if you're not willing to unpack everything in you, you'll never actually find that place within you that's sitting there that's ready for you to claim. And we walk, and so many women walk through life not claiming it because they don't think that they're worth their own love and power. But that's where your entire essence is. Like, I suppress the essence of the woman. Like, I walked out of a, um, a, like, when I left this marriage, I deemed that that my woman and my power of feminine was weak and she did not matter because she had failed me. So I locked her up in a box and I was like, I'm not touching you. And I became the masculine female and I became the control and I became everything that was not her. But you cannot exist without the feminine, without without her. You can't exist without that energy because that's what makes us us. That's what makes us that very person that gives us our uniqueness and makes us different from from them from males. Like, you know, they have their power in their masculine generally. And we have our power in our feminine generally. If we ignore that femininity, you lose it. Mm. And you do, you do lose it. And so when I'm working with women about that, it's it's about learning how to do away with the guilt. So we feel guilty. We feel guilt for the fact that the relationship failed. Like, oh, it must have been my fault. Why was it just your fault? I don't know why it was just my fault. Like, he hurt me too. So it wasn't just your fault. Why are you blaming yourself? Like, why why are we going down this path of guilt? And are you looking after yourself? No, I don't think I deserve to look after myself. Why don't you deserve to look after yourself? Well, he told me. Well, he's not the controller of your universe. He's a part of it. He's not the controller. So we need to go back and work out where did you define your worth and then decide that you get to define it. No one else gets to define that worth in you. And when you decide how to define it, you change the very direction of your life and how you're going to live going forward and how are you hearing you know society has got such deep heavy restrictive competitive negative energy and and messaging uh loaded on a female from the minute she can start to read and and be cognizant of of the messages from like the the fairy tale and being rescued by a prince charming and how how does that really play out as time goes on in terms of the areas where we need to look at what's true and what's not true and then also start to find out who we are you know in in the midst of all of years of that conditioning like like I'm all good I'm all for like a good fairy tale I love a good Disney fairy tale and a a prince saving a princess but and we all grow up and I grew up in that generation of like oh I have to be saved I've got to have the fairy tale and still to this day sometimes I'll say I didn't get my fairy tale Mm. and I was like what fairy tale what do you want and then I look back and I'm like my first marriage was that fairy tale you know he saved me and he did this and he did that and and I'm like I wasn't useless like I I wasn't that's not how it works but we're so conditioned from such a young age that the princess has to be saved and you're a princess and but we're not we're meant to be queens and queens don't need saving Mm. queens need companions queens need a, a king to stand beside her to do life with her not save her and we do away our power when we're like, but I need to be saved from the dragons of life. No, you don't. <laughs> Slay the damn dragon yourself, woman. The man's going to be like, oh, I had a sword. Here, have it. Like he doesn't need to slay it for you, but he can be there with you. Like we go from one extreme to the other. It's like either we need to be the complete damsel in distress for the man or we need to hate men in general. Mm. And I'm like, there, there is an in-between. Like, we can actually coexist and live a very incredible magic life together. We don't need to work from both sides of those things. And you don't need to hate yourself because the, the magazine said that you're not a size four or you're not a size six. Like, what your body looks like is not going to depend on how lovable you are. Like, and we're so conditioned from... I know in Australia, you know, the magazines of Dolly and Girlfriend and, like, they were the magazines I grew up with and they were, like, 
the you know Miranda Kerr was on the front page of Dolly when I was like 13 she was the size of a twig I was not the size of the twig and I couldn't work out what was wrong with me I'm like I have boobs in the wrong like my boobs are too big and my thighs are massive and oh my god and I was really blessed with a mother who didn't focus on those things but instead took care of my health and so when I went through um my parents divorce I emotionally ate and I became very unhealthy and she concentrated on the fact that I was unhappy with the fact that I was emotionally eating and we concentrated on that and I lost the weight but it wasn't about the fact that I wasn't lovable it was about the fact that I was unhealthy Mm. and so I didn't really enter that time of a self-hatred for my body in the way a lot of people did and I was really lucky but I have plenty of friends that were not so lucky and they really faced that battle of like I'm fat like what you're not fat like what's fat anyway like what do you want to like there's healthy and unhealthy you can be any size and be healthy Mm. but if you're not being healthy to your body and looking after it and loving it and feeding it with the things it needs that's when you're not healthy, but it's not about your size anymore. And we're so conditioned through, you know, Photoshop and and unrealistic expectations of what a woman's supposed to look like and she had boobs supposed to be here and her butt's meant to look this way and her thighs should be this size. Like it's really hard to then accept when a man comes into your life to say, but you're beautiful. No, I'm not. And you, and you rebuke it. Like I don't know how many times in my life I've rebuked someone saying, but you are, you're stunning. No, I'm not. Like what are you talking about? My face is really round. I've put on 10 kilos. I can't possibly be attractive. And my husband says, but you are attractive and you're attractive to me. So why does it matter? I'm like, oh, oh. And when the minute you go, thank you, your body goes, oh, I feel really good today. Like, But if you can't look in the mirror and say, I actually really love my body, and maybe it's only one part of your body. Maybe it's like, oh, I really love my arms today. You're literally letting society take over the thought process. And it's a hard and it's a very noisy thought. It's very noisy when you've got social media and you've got people that troll other people telling them that they don't deserve to live because of their body size and Mm -hmm. all these different things going on. But it comes back to the relationship you have with yourself. And if you can't connect, the chatter on the outside will take over. And I, I know, like, I have a very noisy head personally. And when I let the chatter take over, the world wins every time, Mm -hmm. every time it will win. And when you stop letting that take over, you realise that you, in fact, are a queen. You deserve to be whoever you want. You can have as many tattoos as you want in your life. You can dye your hair whatever colour you want. You can wear the clothes that you want to wear. Like I am, people see the photos of me and they're like, but they're really feminine. I'm like, yeah, I know. I love looking. I love being in a dress, but I also own 15 or 14 Harry Potter t-shirts and I love to wear overalls like <laughs> that's my life like if you see me on a day-to-day basis I'm wearing the same pair of overalls that I wear every day of the week because <laughs> they're my most comfortable items of clothing and I feel my most feminine when I'm wearing them mm. and when you realize the queen status that you have you stop trying to be saved and you start working with the men in your life and you stop seeing them as a, oh, he has to save me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't get that fairy tale ending. But fairy tales end at the ending. You don't see their life afterwards. What happens in day-to-day life? And we're like, oh, but there's no magic and there's none of this. And I'm so guilty of it. Like, you know, I've said to my, even my, my husband now, like, we don't have magic. Well, hang on. What magic am I looking for? Is it this blow up firework magic or is it the magic of every little day when I wake up and I'm like oh my god I woke up next to you today or oh my god look at my body I my hair is perfect today or my butt looks amazing like that's magic or you know it's not even in the material maybe it's from the way you meditated or the way you journal today and you just felt the gratitude in the world light you up like When we stop trying to be saved by someone, we start seeing the potential everything has around us and we start having that relationship inside and then changes, it changes the status quo for us and then you stop wanting to be saved and you start wanting to work with your partner. Mm. Do you ever do any work with couples or do you ever do any work with men at all? Um, I haven't yet. Um, I have thought about doing work with couples and it probably is something that I'd love to do because I um, the dynamic in a couple is really interesting when it comes to relationships. Um, but it's definitely not something I've dived into yet, but one day I think I will. Um, and men, 
I am open to working with men. I've never, like women are, as I've said to people and people have said, well, why don't you work with men? I'm like, well, for one, I am a female and I understand female emotions much better than I understand men emotions. But I'm like, if a man comes to me and he feels connected, I will always, I will never turn him away if we gel well. Mm -hmm. And if we can work really well together and I can help him, I'm like, because men go through the same issues that women do. And men suffer at the hands of women the same way that women suffer at the hands of men. And the minute we start learning to work together, the suffering stops. Mm. So I've had a few men where they've said, oh, but I really feel like this. I'm like, well, let's chat about it. Like, what's going on? Like, and they're like, well, women aren't, you know, men aren't the only ones that do this. I'm like, I'm not going to hate on men because you're a man. Like, I could well imagine that a woman has caused you pain the same way a man has caused women pain. I'm like, there is an equal exchange. It's just that one doesn't get talked about as much as the other. Mm-hmm. And are you noticing? I don't know what your the age range of your client is. So you do you notice a difference in terms of generation? I know there's more openness and more receptiveness now to the fact that if things keep happening, it is something within ourselves. Are you noticing if you have like younger clients that they're able to recognise that more so than clients who are of a later generation or older generation? It's funny, I find that probably clients younger, like 25 and under, are still going through an old process of, like, you've got the ones that are starting to change, but you've got the ones that are like, oh, but he doesn't love me, and oh, my whole worth is defined by, and oh, I need this, and they're still coming to that realisation that their life doesn't have to depend on that. Mm -hmm. And then on the other scale, I have a lot of, I have actually spoken to a lot of older women and they're slowly changing because they're coming out of a marriage um, that they've been in for 20 years and suddenly they're like, oh, I don't have to do that. Like I don't have to live by that. I don't have to, I'm not the servant of him. Like why have I lived this way? And I was really, really lucky with my mum and my dad's separation. My mum has always been a little bit different to most mothers. I had an older mother growing up. And when my mum and dad separated 15 years ago, she never remarried. She's never really dated um, because she was interested and she wanted to be fine on her own. And that's where I really learned happiness on your own is the most important thing. And she found fulfillment in just being with herself. And it really taught me how to find that place mm. without fulfill it, without filling it with a man once I became aware of what I was doing. And I think if she had traveled a different road, I think my path would have been very different. And but I see women in her like sort of area and age range where they're like, oh, but you're wrong. You can't talk about these things. How could you? Like, I come from an older family, so I am very left field of what they believe I should be doing. And whilst they're some of them are really really supportive, a lot of them don't understand. Like, they can't quite Mm -hmm. get on board with the concept. And they're like, why would you be doing this? Like, why would you talk about these things? I'm like, because they need to be talked about. Because of people like you who doesn't want to talk about it doesn't want to have this discussion and doesn't want to discuss their feelings this is why we're here Hmm. we're stuck in this place and my generation is very stuck here because we couldn't have that discussion with you and they're like oh but I didn't realize it was a problem it is a problem that's why you feel suppressed and and so it is it it really depends on the person and their environment um regardless of age I found like when I walked into this I I had a very determined age range but everyone's feeling it and everyone's changing it's becoming a very big shift Mm -hmm. and there's this shift in general so it just kind of stands to reason from your experience whether it be personal experience or client experience what kind of what would you say a a healthy conscious relationship entails what are the factors that that happen within that to make it work it's been aware of um like when you're having that conscious relationship and that conscious communication it's been aware of the thoughts and things that go through your mind and it's very easy to ignore them it's very easy to let them take over Mm -hmm. um we talk about the inner mean being a mean girl or the inner mean person and we if we let them take over, they take over relationships, they take over conversations. And I know that I've let it happen. Like we have those moments where we just, we snap and then something happens. And then all of a sudden you're having an argument that you're not really sure how you got into. And it's because you un- you, co- you unconsciously checked out for a second mm. and let something take over. 
and you're yelling at your partner or you're yelling at yourself for something that you're not even sure why it was a problem 10 minutes ago because it wasn't, but there was something brewing because you didn't want to be aware of it. So being aware of things that trigger you and and things that upset you and things that you project, because the thing is the thing that we're triggered by or get upset by are things that we are mirroring. Mm -hmm. So I always say like there's a big thing when we mirror something and something in, in someone else annoys us, it's because it's been mirrored back to us something that we don't like. And it's something we're probably struggling with inside. And if we're not making ourselves consciously aware of it, it will continue to irritate you. It will continue to cause you pain. It will continue to cause you these arguments that you don't understand what you're having. And, you know, we're so quick to throw things around like a narcissistic person or a gaslighter or things like that. But we have to look at ourselves too because every single person has narcissistic traits Mm. and we all Mm. have the ability to be, but it's whether or not we're aware of it and stop it. And if we can stop it within ourselves first, the person that is having an issue, if they're doing something, it may actually not be our problem. And so we're not going to get triggered and then we can be say to them, like, you need to take a second. Mm -hmm. And as you become more consciously aware, that person becomes more consciously aware because we feed off energy and when we begin to feed off energy, the dynamic in a relationship changes when you're both aware. And it's not stepping on you know it's not being really careful and walking on eggshells around each other you have to have the hard conversations and when you're feeling something you need to enter that conversation in a way that is not an attack like I think we we have this issue where we feel we have to have an argument because you know arguing is healthy and you know it's always the thing that comes after the arguments the makeup after the argument blah 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 blah. but you don't have to have an argument in order to have a makeup and you don't have to have an argument in order for your relationship to be healthy. You cannot argue and still have really intense discussions. Mm. It doesn't have to be an argument that comes after. You could just have a really intense, in-depth discussion and agree to disagree. Like there are times my husband and I have not seen eye to eye at all, but it doesn't mean that, one, we're going to break up. It doesn't mean that we hate each other. It doesn't mean that we're arguing. It doesn't mean that we're not talking to each other. It just means that we couldn't come to the same agreement because we have different views. Mm. And so being consciously aware that you don't have to be the same as your partner and your partner doesn't have to have the same opinion doesn't mean that you're not compatible. It doesn't mean that you can't have a really great relationship. But if you're going to be unaware of it and if you think that's the be-all and end-all, then you have to take a really hard look at yourself and consciously be aware of the conversations you're having with yourself because they are also important. Mm. And it's interesting because those the very thing that would give us some peace and and allow us to be successful in other areas of our life are the very pieces that we don't get given when we go through any kind of education. You know, you don't get told what, how money works. You don't get told any emotional tools to, to deal yeah. with life. And so you get sent out into the world like blindly and then wonder why things just continue to to repeat itself without without any understanding I I just wondered what is the earliest or the youngest that you you feel that you would work with or or would you want to start with you know young women young girls um it's actually something that I've been thinking about a lot lately like I really my heart breaks when I watch young girls go through the divorce of their parents and watching them look to their fathers and seeing heartbreak happen because their father has left the home and their father then now is not interested. And so Mm. their hearts and the way in which they then grow forward um, is pivotal. Like it's really important and we don't realise just how much they take from that um, when they start to begin to feel their self-worth because self-worth can happen as I know I've heard women say as young as five, they can remember whether or not they've defined their worth of whether or not their parents love them or whether or not they've had friends. And I know for me, that age was about 13 where my parents were splitting up and suddenly I didn't have that complete family unit of feeling wanted and loved by both parents. My mum did a wonderful job. Like she was constantly there. She constantly provided. She constantly gave me the love and and attention that I needed and the care and the, you know, the lessons. Mm. But the thing was, she wasn't my dad. And so my dad, there was a topic for another time, but 
I lost a lot of that love that you get from a male that's never meant like your father's never meant to hurt you. Like the whole concept is that your dad loves you and he is the man that teaches you what to accept from a man. So if you don't have that healthy relationship, you go in search of that relationship and you try to enter that relationship. And the saying goes that women will marry their fathers and men will marry their mothers because, and even if that's the good or the bad, they go looking for either a missing link or they go looking to replace the link. And if you go looking for the missing link, you will always find the negative. Like I found the negative in my first husband and he is the shadow of my dad in a bad light. And so I thought that was going to fix me. Mm-hmm. And so when when young girls start looking for their worth and they have a disconnect and they don't understand how to fill it, they will go in search of trying to fill it. And that's when we spiral. That's when we, you know, the out of control happens or, you know, parents say, I don't know why she's acting out. I don't know why she's sneaking out with all those boys. But what's going on in her life right now? Like she may not want to talk to you, but she will show you at some point what is happening and you need to listen to that to see it happening because it's there and they're saying it, they're screaming it. It just not might not be in the words you want to hear. My experience is that I grew up without a father because my my father died very young in 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 my life. So then the there was like I wanted to say that the bar was set low and to be honest, there was no bar really because yeah. when, when there's been absolutely no um, male figure and, 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 you know, looking back on it, hindsight's brilliant and I can kind of see certain things. So um, Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but when you're in it, you can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> and it took, you know, like a, a few relationships <laughs> in order to work out what what effect it was having and it had that it had like a couple of effects and these are still things that I'm still work figuring out because um in my in my family unit there were very few men around so there were very few instances of working relationships yeah so I didn't see very much interaction of men and women on a daily basis and because the majority of the women within that circle had such poor experiences of men. The talk about men was not very favorable. So men were, uh, 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 yeah, men you know? were not a positive thing in your life. So it's hard no. to understand, like it's hard to see where they would be positive and how you're supposed to have a positive experience. If there's a lot of negative, mm. It's hard to flip that. It's hard to flip that script and be like, Oh, maybe it would be really great. And you're like, well, everyone else told me it was really it was yeah. going to be really bad. So I don't have high expectation. And and unfortunately, you end up getting treated like shit. Yeah. Well, and this it's is not it. <laughs> necessarily your fault. Like it's not because you're a bad person or it's not because there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that the experience you've had wasn't positive. And so you don't search for the good because you don't think that no. it's there. Looking back on it, it was like it was an absolute, there was nothing there. So then should any guy come in? they could tell me absolutely anything and there was no barometer for what was brilliant and what was bullshit, basically, you know? And when I look back on the stuff that I fell for, I mean, you know, I have to like forgive myself for not knowing any better, but at the time when looking back now, it's like, man, that's just like a red flag. (laughs) Yeah, and and the thing is because we don't have that, that bar set and we don't have that you know this is what I'll settle for and anything less than this is not acceptable Mm. we take anything and you believe everything they say and I did it in my first marriage like he anything he told me I believed because I thought he was right because how could he possibly be wrong when you know I had one the male the one male in my life who I thought was perfect was not so anything he told me had to be completely correct and so it was really hard to be like, I don't settle for less than this. Mm. And so I had no, I had no level of which I would settle for. I had no, you know, thing written out. Like it's, it's really wonderful to see women now say, I wrote a list. This is what I, this is what I accept. And anything less than this is not enough. Mm. I'm like, that's great. Like, I really love that you do that. That was not a thing six years ago. That was not a thing 10 years ago. That was not a thing when my dad left. Like it was, you just accepted who he was and leaving was not always an option 
Mm. Like, you know, you work it out, you work hard and you, you'll fix this. And I did. And you know what happened? You lose identity, mm. you lose self. And every time you go through a breakup, you lose a little piece of you that you don't know how to put back. And then you go through these, these experiences and, and it's hard when you get to the end of it, not to look back and feel guilty and feel like you failed and feel like you're the problem. And you're like, but you're not the problem. And the same is that they're not necessarily the problem. It's that it didn't work mm. and that we weren't honest with ourselves because we weren't aware of it. And it, awareness is something that, one, you get after some really bad experiences or you've learned to become aware because of experiences or because of stories that you've heard. But in the day of like now where personal development is so big and awareness is such a big thing, it's great but you have to acknowledge the experiences that you've had without beating yourself up. And I'm guilty of it. Like I look back and think, oh, I could have done better than that. Why did I stay? Because I thought I was making the right decision because I didn't think there was another option. Mm. And when you start to do that, you, the guilt lessens. And you're like, well, I was learning something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a wealth of knowledge one day. <laughs> it will be great. <laughs> realizing that yeah and um and and forgiveness as well you know that mm-hmm. that that's I, I think is a is a really big one if I'm again going back on my own experiences just given the information that you had I very little it was you know it was you it was probably going to go that way that you were going to walk into some really tough experiences and have yeah. having to work it out that way because there was no barometer or there was no like male figure in your life that, that was like anyone who doesn't give you anything over and above that it's like you don't even and it's all it's also having the confidence I think as well yeah. of thinking that you can you can have you, you can, can demand those things and 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 be worthy of them and you have a choice like I think, you know, so many women don't think that they have a choice or they think they just they don't think that they deserve more. And it comes back to confidence and it comes back to realizing that you actually can have whatever you want if you believe that you can have it. Mm-hmm. And we don't. And especially if especially if like in your circumstance where there wasn't a, a, a male role model or a positive role, male role model. Oh my God, I can't get that out. <laughs> um, it's hard not to accept the love anyone gives you and not be not question it. Like, it, you know, they're paying me attention. They're loving me. This must be the right thing. So you take it hmm. without going, but I don't like the way they talk to me after they said they love me. Oh, it must just be their, their character or their personality. Oh, that must be acceptable. Actually, no, it's not acceptable for someone to give you a gift and then tell you that you're a shitty person. You know, they can't give you a gift and then treat you like crap. Hmm. That doesn't, it's not how that works. Like it's not an exchange for them, for their behaviour. But if you haven't learned that that's unacceptable, you'll just accept it. And I have. I did on multiple occasions and they're like, oh, maybe you just need to treat him like shit. And I'm like, I'm not going to treat him like shit because he treated me like shit, but I'll just accept that he treated me like shit because isn't that what you do? Because I love him. And and it always comes up, oh, but you love him like that doesn't excuse the behaviour. It doesn't mean you have to excuse the behaviour, but you have to learn that. And if you haven't seen it being played out like that or you've seen it being played out where someone is going through that constantly, you accept it as that's what happens. Mm. And so it's it's very hard to be like, hang on, I don't have to do that. I don't have to go through the, the history that my mother went through. I don't have to go through the things that happened past and continue to repeat. Like I'm allowed to say no and it's hard it's hard to realize that we're allowed to say no mm. because we're such yes people. Like if you say no, then you're no fun. Like, well, it's actually self-preservation, but what if yeah. uh, I'll just do it because everyone else said I should. And, and then you get peer pressure on top of that. You add pressure and you walk into relationships. You're not even sure you want to be in, but you're there because you think, Oh, it must be right. Everyone else said it was right. Mm. And ignoring ignoring that niggling feeling of this isn't good, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so many things, and and even thinking about the um, I've learned this one now, but recognizing what I'm being shown and not the yeah. potential of what somebody could be. Yes, 
you know, everyone has potential, but they actually have to, they actually have to come into that. It's not what you can see. Like we all think people have potential, but it doesn't mean that they're going to go there. They mm. could just never move and you have to accept them in their place. And if their place that they're currently at is not where you want to be, you don't have to be there and you don't have to look for their potential and you don't have to accept, but they have really great potential. No, they don't. I'm sorry, but they're probably if they don't want to be that potential, they're not going to be. <laughs> How funny. Yeah, it's um I'm I'm just the, there are just like certain flashbacks of things coming when I'm thinking <laughs> of the potential or you know, when the, the saying is when somebody tells you who they are or shows you who they are, believe them. And you just kind yeah. of go into a situation where you're not speaking from experience again like like from day one it's very clear who this person is what they want they'll probably even tell you in in a way but you just you know that you don't see you don't hear you don't speak it's just because you go in there going like it feels so it could be this it you know uh, you know I got pulled into a situation where I convinced myself this was like a twin flame thing it wasn't it was just like some rotten ass basically (laughs) And the thing is you can you can make any relationship be what you want in your head and mm. think that that's exactly what's going to be but it's probably not if it's not playing out in front of you it's not it mm. and we get so stuck up in our head and what it should be like that we actually trick ourselves into believing it is and it's and it's not it's not funny at the time but you look back and you think how could I have actually how how did I think that like but the thing is, they paid you attention. They yeah. they gave you that whatever you're craving. They gave it to you, and you took it. And you're like, this could work. This could be the next great love story. This could be this. And then you sort of get six months, and you go, um, <laughs> this is not a love story. This is just really shit. And now I'm. And then you get to that stuck phase, like you get stuck, and you're like, so how do I leave? Mm. I I feel guilty if I'm leaving. I don't want to hurt him, and I. I, and as I say to some people, like, it's not about hurting them. It's not that you want to hurt them, but you have to leave. Like, it's your own health. And you're allowed to say no and you're allowed to change your mind and you're allowed to leave. Like, you are never, ever stuck, hmm. ever. You're and it's, but it is. It's, it's, the, it's what we want it to be in our head and then what we see in reality and then we just, we just put this sheet over it. We're like, no, no, it's exactly how it's playing out in my head. And then it falls short you think, how did I not see the signs? Everyone's like, how did you not see the signs? Like they were right there. I'm like, but I didn't want to see them. And you won't see them even if everybody told you it was wrong. Mm. You'll still do it. Like I, I look back at my first marriage and I think there are so many indicators that it was never going to work, even before we got married, even on our wedding day. There were <laughs> indicators. And I just was like, no, it's perfect. And my mum said, but would you have listened to someone if they said it was wrong? I said, no, I would have married the guy anyway because it was my choice. And she goes, exactly. We can't tell you because, one, you're the most stubborn person in the world. You'll never listen. And, two, when you're in love, blinders go on and that's it. Like, you you don't, you don't want to hear it. So I, you know, got married and, and the next thing I know I'm in this relationship that's not working but... I didn't want to have divorce. I was like, I'll just work harder. Mm. Unfortunately, working harder with someone who doesn't want to work harder doesn't work. So four years of like battling ended in divorce anyway when I could have just stepped out before. But I just, you know, you think, oh, but I'm going to make it work. Like I got married. Like I have to succeed because I'll be a failure. You're not failing. Mm. The relationship failed. That doesn't make you a failure. And that's a really big lesson. And then you have to forgive yourself for it. And that's even, it's not worse, but it's hard. Like you, and I, and people say, but why did you forgive him? I'm like, I forgave him for my own sanity. But I said, I forgave me for my own health. I'm like, the forgiveness was about me, not him. Mm. Forgive you, forgive the situation for you, not them. And when you forgive everything, you let them go. And then you're like, oh, I feel lighter. But it's, it's a walk you have to take and it's a, sometimes it's a mistake that you have to make potentially not before you enter a marriage. I don't recommend it, but (laughs) be very aware. Like it's, it's such a big awareness once, (laughs) once you've done it. 
you're really aware of it afterwards. And the next one you walk into, you're like, oh, mm. and you're more critical. But sometimes you're not. Like I've, I, you know, I did make the same mistakes with, with my husband now. Like, you know, oh, but he can do this. And I'm like, eh, he can't. Like why do you keep telling yourself he has that? He doesn't. I love him to pieces and he's a wonderful man, but there were things that I was like, oh, but I can change that. You can't change anybody. Mm-hmm. You can't. People don't change because you want them to. They change because they decide to. Same as same as yourself. And if you were to meet yourself, you know, with all the wisdom and the hindsight that you had, what advice would you give to your younger self as she's about to enter into, but it's a, it's a learning experience. So you can't say it's not, you know, not a right thing, but just like ways of dealing in, dealing in a situation that, you know, will mean that you come out of it learning and relatively unscathed, but seeing the, seeing the lesson as opposed to going to, you know, avoid everything that could possibly go south. Um, if I was meeting my younger self, I would I would say to her that everything that's happening is happening for a reason and you will learn something valuable from it, but it's not your fault. It's not completely your fault. There's nothing wrong with you. Your worth is not defined by what's about to happen, but it's okay and you're going, you're not going to die. Mm-hmm. You're not going to die from this and you're going to survive and you're going to be really strong, but be open to what comes next and don't shut off. Don't shut down just because one thing failed in your life. And one thing didn't work, it doesn't mean that your inner person is not trustworthy. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's just a bad situation that's about to happen and you're going to ride it the best way you can. Mm. But stop and think. Like don't react just for the sake of reacting. It's not worth it, but you will learn. There's a lesson, you're learning, and it will be okay. It will always be okay, even if it doesn't look okay. I think that's the one thing I really struggled to understand was it will always be okay. Mm. Even if it feels like the end of the world, it will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, you haven't made it yet. But you just sometimes raise your hand and ask for help. I know, you know, when you're stuck in a relationship, it's hard to ask for help because you don't want people to judge you and you don't want people to look in and you don't want your partner to know that you're asking for help because you don't want them to be like, why are you telling everybody? Mm. Ask for help because you know what's the one thing that's going to help you. You don't have to be stuck. Perfect. So I ask all the women that come onto the podcast a set of questions that are the Her Conversation podcast questions. And the first one is, what is the best piece of advice a woman has ever given to you? Um, the best piece of advice, hmm, that's a good run. Probably from my mum that I am allowed to just be me. You're allowed to be you, no matter what, doesn't matter. When did she tell you that? I think only in the last couple of years, actually. Like, she was proud of me for just being me. Mm. Like, I'm allowed to be me. I don't have to be anybody else. Perfect. And what's what woman would you say represents higher energetic resonance to you? Actually, a woman that I spoke to last night for a podcast, funnily enough, um, her name is Shannon Rose. She she does represent her, mm. like just it's magnetic. Great. Are you going to be recording with her? Yes, I recorded my podcast last night. So, oh, you're on, a, you're on a roll then. <laughs> I am. It was like I was like, oh, I've got two two days. It's great. <laughs> Good for you. And what's your favorite self care ritual and practice? It's become meditation. I love slowing down and just being with myself for half an hour. It just it really centers me and grounds me and balances out all the crazy effective right so effective (laughs) are you a morning meditator or a night meditator or you just catch it when you need it um generally morning I like to have a routine so generally morning but sometimes midday happens too cool what you double up (laughs) sometimes I double up sometimes if I haven't had a long enough one I'll go and do it again because I'm like oh I haven't I just didn't feel it today so Sometimes you just, you walk into meditation, you sit down, you make the intention and you're so restless. You think there's so much chatter. I can't quieten it to get there today, but I'll do it later. 
So what's coming up for you? Have you got like new courses, new services? Are you are you creating new stuff in the world? Um, actually, I've got a couple of things coming up, but I am um, relaunching my one-on-one. I've had a bit of a price change at the moment. So my one-on-one's reopening um, for a couple of women and I am creating a masterclass coming up in the next couple of weeks and something free in my group. I'm really excited they're sort of all coming together slowly but they're coming good for you and if you can just tell everyone Emily where we can find you online or your your website your social media handles any other secret parts of the internet that you might inhabit um you can find me at www.emilyturnercoaching.com that's my website there's a blog uh, my services my story and everything on there um if you head to facebook you can find my free facebook group which is called not a pity party the girl gang breaking up with breakups um it is probably somewhere i love to be Mm. and um you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is emily.c.turner. And you can look me up on my personal Facebook page too. I love having friends. So just look up Emily Turner 23 and you'll find me there too. You'll find my blue hair. Just follow the blue hair. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. And and just uh, just going back to your Facebook group, what, mm-hmm. what exciting things happen in that? I really love the name. I love the name. It came out of a a brain dump that I didn't know whether or not I could name it that, but I decided I would anyway because I was like, you know what, it is. It's not a pity party. It's it's about changing the story and changing how we deal with it and rather than sitting down and having a pity party, we're not going to have one this time. So um, at the moment it's gone through a bit of a transition and a bit of a change, but I am amping it up and I'm going to be doing a lot more live recordings, um, a lot about journey to self, a lot about learning how to love self and self-sabotage and things like that and then um it's probably at the moment which I haven't announced anyone yet so it's gonna be the first that I announce it here but the next couple of weeks I'm going to do probably a free three-day training on relationship to self and learning how to create that self-care ritual that everybody needs because I feel like people just are missing the concept of what self-care really is it's not just bubble baths and massages so I'm currently going to be creating that in my free group um my free group's growing I'm trying to really grow it into be a support basis um somewhere you can see whether or not my services are available work with me talk to me um I really want to be interactive where we're all supporting each other through our own journeys whether you're in breakup marriage struggle relationship struggle single um it's just about coming together to learn that everybody's allowed to love themselves Mm. so beautiful Thank you so much. I just love the name of it. I just wanted you to just kind of elaborate on on what happens there because it's like some good stuff happens there. I can feel it. It is. It's going to be like the plan is for this group to be epic. Like I am so excited about it. It lights me up because you know what? It's time to break up with the bullshit. Here, here. Love that. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for coming on to her conversations. Thank you for being my first Australian interviewee as well. Thank you for having me. I feel so blessed to be on here and so grateful. And I'm really honoured to be the first Australian. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Bye. Thanks to Emily for joining me for this episode of Her Conversations. And thank you for listening. You can discover more about me by visiting my website, carolmaywittick.com. That's C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. And also Her Life Academy is now open in that I'm actually posting daily little snippets uh, on Instagram television under the Her Life Academy Instagram account. So that's at Her Life Academy. That's giving you more insight into what is actually involved in Her Life Academy and also more information about how to get involved in the Academy now that it's opened. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that's just Kazmik, so C-A-Z-M-I-C-K and you can find me on Facebook under Carol May Wittick. And also I would appreciate you leaving a comment, liking, sharing any episodes and if you subscribe, that means you'll be notified as soon as an episode is published on the platform of your choice. So thank you again for listening and until the next episode enjoy your week bye